have some of the... Oh, yeah, we have a Porteous Mill, actually. <laughs> a Porteous Mill. That's cool. Yeah. You all know the story about Porteous Mills, do you? Yeah. yeah. Why they went bankrupt. Huh? No smoking. no smoking here, no, no. No smoking on the site. Just out the back. But uh, in here we have this, the old Mashtons. The best of modern technology in the late 70s. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a scene from something in Chernobyl. <laughs> the, 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 scan, the system that they have on it here. But uh, yeah, this was uh, Neil actually. If he, I think he's coming there now. Neil worked on the Bruin part of it here. I, I, I started after Neil. I only ever ended up working on the, on the new plant. But uh, this was, yeah, this was a hive of activity for many, many years, used to make ales like Smittix. Never made Guinness here actually until the new plant went in. I'm pretty sure of that. But uh, yeah, still pretty impressive to this day. Like. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not many things that have been left alone. I never saw that one. The only one I ever saw working, I, I never saw these working. The only one I ever saw working was that one. That was the only one that I ever, I, I don't think Neil ever saw these ones working either. I think he's coming, is he coming there now, Neil? I don't know where he is. Yeah, they're pretty big, all right, yeah. yeah. And then you have two kettles here as well. Uh, they have them lagged in aluminium. They're actually copper as well, the kettle, but they have them lagged in aluminium just for heat purposes. All right. Uh, do, you, do, you, I never, do you ever see them ones working? No, they have been working since, do we reckon, around before the 1950s. 90, so over 70, 80 years ago. Yeah. But Anthony Brazel is the head engineer here now, and his dad was the engineer here. And even at that time, they weren't in operation. So it's definitely the 1950s prior right back, to that. Yeah, yeah. 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 This one, you worked on this one though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, this one was working right up until 2002, the very last brew. Yeah. So we brewed yeah. Smittix, Smittix Ale, um, yeah. in, in this one, yeah. Is it steel? It's stainless, yeah, stainless steel. And perforated floor. Um, the yeah. last one in the new system is it's all stainless yeah. over there as well, yeah. yeah. So I think these were built in the 1900s, I think it's a... Yeah, there's a plaque, so on, a plaque on, on the far side. 1900, they were installed. Yeah. And then later, you were rebuilt. With, with stainless, probably fit, refit with stainless, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, copper, obviously, copper top for when you're um, sparging. Copper goes down on top. You'd sparge then through, through this. So, it would be nice to get this back in operation. Yeah. Well, what do you do? You just drop the water through the perforated floor, is it? Yeah, the water then runs down through the grain, through the false bottom, and you drain out. And then you sparge on top, and the water goes down through it. How many sparges would have been happening on it? Yeah, about four or five. Different temperatures? Yeah, all incremented. Yeah. So you just monitor the temp. That was a temperature probe here. You'd monitor the temperature there, 64 degrees. Would you? Yeah. That was it? That was it, yeah. And how long would you sparge for then? Two hours, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. At four different temperatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. just leave a seep through it to the perforated floor. Yeah, till you collect and the water. That, that was it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Handy enough, though, was it? Oh, it's handy. Yeah. Is it handier system what we have? Similar enough. It's just this is down through through the grain, and the other one is horizontal. So same, very same. Does the very same thing. And how did you get the stuff out? Down through the, the down through the hole here. We just scraped out your that yeah, that you could that came raise up and it turn around and push it out the hole there. It'd take about an hour to empty it out. It is. Yeah. And then hose it out, is it? Or? Hose it out, yeah. There we go down here, will we? Yeah, we go down the wash box. Yeah. <laughs> Do 
Do we, do we bring him up the garden? No, we can bring him up to show the. I can bring him up later on to show him the, the still. Mm. I'll bring him up later See on. See what the weather's like, yeah. yeah. You go up this way. Are the ones upstairs older? They are, yeah. Yeah. Don't know the dates right now. No. Let's find that out in a second. Huh? Let's find that out. Here, I'll give you one of them. So here you have your open fermenters. Uh, these open fermenters haven't been in operation since 19, early 1970s. Obviously with the open atmosphere, the CO2 would have been very very dangerous in an environment like this. So the only ventilation was through the open windows. So in the 1970s, they transfer the open fermenters to conical enclosed uh, fermenters, which are in the new distillery. So there they exist in fermentation vessels that they installed in the 1970s. So what they did is they, from the brew that was mashed in the brew house, the wort went into a collection vessel here and the yeast was pitched in here. And then it was transferred to a, a, a conical shaped fermentation vessel down in the other part of the brewery. And these ones were just closed down, shut off. Uh, there's more upstairs. If you want to go upstairs, you'll see, you'll see more. If you go up that way, the ones upstairs are pretty impressive. Um, so would be some distilleries would use them, but to be honest, the only ones I would see with open fermenters now, they would probably use wooden open fermenters, and they would just pitch the yeast into them, and then they'd move it. They'd move it then into a, a conical shaped fermenter for the collection of CO2. So some distilleries would only use it as a, a cosmetic yeah. um, effect. It's costly to see a few of them with open fermenters. But yeah, not many very very few distilleries yeah, yeah. would have them open now. No, well, it's a it, it's a list. It's a list of buildings, so there's very little we can do with it. Like you could pump a million euros into a place like this, and just to get it to a standard for health and safety reason to allow people to walk around. But it'd be fantastic if we could open it up as a visitor center of some sort. Maybe have a bar yeah. or a function area. It'd be fantastic. But it's not on the cards anytime soon. You could put a lot of money into. Or you it could put a million euros into this place. You wouldn't even see. It wouldn't make it up. No. It took years. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 The heavyweight is the third floor. Turn them into Turkish oh. baths. Oh, right. What? No. But a serious weight there. <laughs> serious weight. But, um. The third floor is the heavyweight. Yeah, heavy. Yeah. See, this, this, is, this is going down onto the floor underneath, and this is just a false floor here. That's only, uh. Yeah. I'd say it's only, um, timber joists across. The 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are the, that's, that's the original roof. That's the only extraction for CO2 to come off it. It's just a fan pulling it out. <laughs> and they just know, I suppose they just knew what time to be up here. Like, that's the only reason they could, yeah, they could all, the windows would, all the windows would have been open. Yeah. And in the summertime, if there was an empty one, lads would use it as a swimming pool. They'd swim around. <laughs> after, a few, after a few beers <laughs> on a warm day, they'd just jump in. <laughs> All right, so this is, look, this is the old part of, the, of our existing distillery yeah. now. Look, it's, it's nice to tell the story and show people because, look, it was a working brewery for hundreds of years. So now um, we'll go over to the now Waterford Distillery. So in 2015, it was converted from a Guinness extract brewery to working distillery. So we'll, we'll bring you into it. So in 2002, Diageo invested... Um, 40 million. It was a 40 million into the distillery across the way. Into, and they transferred it from a working brewery. So from brewing Smithix Ale here on site on this part of the brewery, they expanded the brewery over into the distillery you see it now. And they built a brand new facility um, to, to produce Guinness extract. And in 2013, they decided to close the operations here 
and move everything to Dublin. Ten years or eleven years. Ten years. I think it was just ten, ten years. Ten, just ten years. Ten years. The announcement was made, and then yeah. we operated for another year, year yeah. and a half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, and that, actually, it's funny at the moment. So, the, the AGO decided to do that to obviously consolidate everything, consolidate everything into one site. So it was a cost-saving exercise at the time. They closed Waterford Brewery, Kilkenny Brewery, Dundalk Brewery. Waterford Brewery is now Waterford Distillery. Dundalk Brewery, Teelings operate that as a distillery Great now. Northern, yeah. And Kilkenny Brewery was just given to the local authority. Um, but now Diageo are looking for planning permission for a brand new brewery outside of Dublin. They got the green light. Mm. So up in County Kildare, they're building a brand new brewery um, because they don't have any more space in St. James Gate, Dublin. So